What's up, no coders? In this video, I show you how to take your software built no code web app and give it superpowers using what I call action buttons. So let's build. No code dum, is dum, the best in the whole wide world. No code, oh bum, yeah, bum, yeah. Bum. Bum, 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 bum. So what I found is I'm getting people contacting me through social media and through the different communities. And I would say about 70 to 80% of the questions that I'm being asked can actually be solved by this one concept. So what exactly is an action button? Well, an action button is something that can trigger an action. So when your users come along to your web app and you want them to be able to do something, you might like to let users either like a certain item within a list or to save that item for later, whether it's jobs or whether it's movies, you can allow your user to basically mark that list item and add it into their for later or likes or favorited section of their client portal. As you can see here, when you click the like button, it simply tots up the total amount of likes on a particular record and the user can click in here into their dashboard and see all of the films that they have liked. Similarly, if we look at it maybe from the angle of an estate agent who might have a list of properties. In this use case, I've shown a sort of auction listing. As you can see here, buyers can fill in their actual bid amount and place the bid and when they place their bid, they can now go down and keep track of all of the bids that they placed on the various different properties. I believe native action buttons are on the roadmap for software. And I really do think it would be a game changer for software as a no code web app builder, because it adds such a layer of functionality on top of any listing type no code app that you can think of. So until we have action buttons natively inside of software, I'm going to show you how I achieve an action button type functionality. And I'll show you exactly how to do that so that you can take your no code software web app and take it really to that next next level. What's great about all of the use case examples I showed earlier is that it's all achieved using the exact same logic and the exact same process flow. The structure consists of three primary tables. You have a table for users or members or people or contacts, whatever table it is that you use to store all of your people inside of your project. And then the second table is your thing. So in this one where the users or the members can come in and like movies, the thing is movies. In your build, it might be courses, it might be coaches, it might be mentors, it might be jobs. Really, the list is endless. There's an infinite number of use cases that you can achieve with the technique that I'm about to show you. If we look at our estate agent portal, again, you've got your people or your contacts being the primary table. Your thing is properties. And then the third table that you need is the action. So the action is what is triggered by the all important action button. And so in this case, the action is bidding. When we look at our movie jam tutorial, the, the action is liking. And when we look at an event registration type workflow, which is one that we'll dig into now, and which will in effect enable you to reproduce any of the examples that we showed you earlier. And if any of these examples don't match your specific use case, you can apply this to any use case. And just to let you know, I'm going to leave an embedded copy of this particular Airtable base. So if you don't catch everything in this video, you'll be able to catch a copy of that. If you jump over to my own website and link it in the description below. You'll be able to get into my community and access all of the resources that I have accompanying all of these YouTube tutorials. So it's for those of you that want to dive into it in a little bit more detail and who want to actually apply what I'm showing you here to your own use case and also learn with the community in terms of any questions that you might have or any specifics or if you're running in a, into any roadblocks. So if we look at this event registration type scenario, right, you've got people in the first table, events in the second table, and then you've got registrations in the third table. People thing and action people thing action people thing action so it's always consists of three primary tables you're trying to link effectively the user and whatever it is that is in your list block inside of your software web app and you're trying to do something with it whether it's registering for an event whether it's applying for a job whether it's applying for a property listing whether it's liking a film all of these things can be built out using this exact type of primary structure inside of your Airtable base so if we use this event registration example i'll jump into the live build so here's our very functional web app i haven't spent much time on actually the cosmetics of the app so please forgive me but it's very functional and it shows you where you have a list block inside of your software app, right? And on that list block, I've got this all important action button. So what this list block will show is whatever the thing is that's in your build. And then the button is going to allow you to link that thing with the current user that is clicking the button. So in this case, the action is registering for the event. So it's linking that event to me, the user that is clicking the action button. We click one there and we click another one there. And so it's registering me for both of those events. These are fictional events, by the way, in case I was getting some of your hopes about there. There's no softer community ski trip that I'm aware of, but 
if there is one to be announced, I'm pretty sure we'd all be happy to go. Anyway, the user has now registered for the event, whether or not it's actually going to take place. And if you click on my events, so it's now able to show the user that is registering through your portal or your dashboard or your web app or your membership platform. It keeps track for them of any things that they have linked themselves. In this case, it shows your end users what events they have registered for and that are specific to them. And to flip this around a little bit, you might be the event coordinator uh, also using this web app that you built through software and using user groups, you'll be able to see the entire population or the entire list of all unique links between a thing and a person. In this case, all unique links between a thing and a person is basically a list of registrations. And so you as the event coordinator will be able to see all of those while all of the people attending the events are only going to be able to see their view of the world. And so that's one of the really amazing things about software for building out a list type, no code app. And particularly when you combine it with this ability to do an action or an action button, I've just deregistered for that event. And now look, it's back up on the list here. And now it's showing that I'm only registered for that ski trip that is probably not happening. But anyway, let's keep our hopes up for that. So if we jump into our software studio, I'll show you exactly how to configure this functionality. This is our primary list block, right? This is our list of things. So whatever the thing is in your particular use case, obviously the thing in this use case is the events table. And so we have our list of events. And if we scroll down, we simply have the image of the for the event and the name of the event displaying and the status and obviously you can configure this whatever way you would like the card to look. And then this is the key piece here for creating your action button. Okay, so the action button is achieved by using maybe one of the lesser used or lesser known field types inside of Airtable list blocks is the embed type and the embed type is very powerful in earlier tutorials I showed how to use the embed type to embed all sorts of documents and nice views of say Google Sheets or PDF type documents inside of a client portal. In this use case, I'm actually embedding a form from another page inside of the software application. Now we'll go through that bit by bit so that you can follow along with it step by step. Okay. So this button here is effectively a software form and it just has no fields. All of the fields are going to be hidden fields. And where that software form lives is over here on the register now page. Okay. So this app only consists of three pages uh, to get this core functionality up and running. This is the entirety of the event registration page. So this button here is what is actually appearing on our list block. And so if you can click on this, you can see it's simply a form block. And I've come into the settings up here and I've removed all of the padding from the top and the bottom so that it is as slim and as, 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 as slight as possible so that it will fit nicely into your list block. And when you come down here, all an action is doing from an action button is effectively linking a person as in the end user that's clicking the action button and a thing. So an event, a property, a course, I keep repeating myself. So sorry about that. That's what our hidden fields are doing. It's basically telling your Airtable base about who clicked it, i.e. the logged in user email here is being passed as a hidden parameter. And then it's also passing the record ID of the event. Okay. So they're the two pieces of information that we're trying to link together, the event and the person. So that's all we're passing with the button. This is just a straight software to Airtable integration. We're sending it to Airtable. The base is the base that we're jumping back to now in a second. And the table is the registrations table. Okay. So if we come into our base, you will see it is creating effectively a registration record every time that that action button is clicked on the list block. And so all that really is populating in here from the form or from the action button is this field here being the registered attendee. And this is a linked field to our people table. And so it's passing the record ID of the logged in user from the hidden form field inside of your action button into your action table. So into your registration table in this use case. So it's telling your air table base that this particular user wants to attend this particular event. And again, this is the second piece of information that's passed by that action button and it's passed in the form of a record ID, which is unique to every record inside of your Airtable base. And so it's linking to your 
theme table, in this case, your events table. And pretty much everything else in this table you'll see is a lookup field. And the reason I'm using a lookup field for everything else in here is because I want to be able to present this table of data as a list. When I go back to my app, it's actually going to be the list of registrations that I spoke about earlier that are unique to the logged in user, whether that user is an end user of your app that is looking at events that they have registered for, or whether that user is say the event coordinator. And so if we come back into the software studio and we click on this list, effectively what this list is, is a list of the actions table, or in this use case, the registrations table. And if we scroll down, we've got a conditional filter on it. And if you've watched any of my previous tutorials, you'll know that conditional filters is one of my favorite features inside of software. And all the conditional filter is basically doing is saying that the name from the registered attendee inside of my registrations table is equal to the logged in user's name inside of your user's table in your software web app. So what that in effect is going to do is it's only going to present registrations that are specific to me, the end user, and it won't show any other users registrations. That is really the key or the trick to this method. And in terms of the actual technicality of how to present the button inside of your list block on your primary page. Effectively what it's doing, that embed field in here, it's linking to this field inside of your Airtable backend. You don't need to understand this code snippet. You'll be able to copy this exactly, but effectively what it is, it's called an iframe. It's, an, it's HTML and software allows this snippet to be passed to it so that it will present whatever it is that's in this URL field inside of the snippet. And so I've actually used a formula field to pass the URL of my register now page, which in my software web app is this page, which just purely holds the form with the button. And if we go back into the Airtable base, I'm adding on two parameters to that specific URL so that on each card in your list block, it's showing the page that has the record ID of that specific item. So I need to know which event is being clicked on. And so in order to do that, I've passed the record ID of the event into each specific card or each specific embed card so that when you click this button, it's taking the record ID of the Airtable escape room record and it's passing it as that hidden field through that form. And so that is key to this functionality working. You have to have the record ID in the URL of the form page that's being submitted. And software then also allows you to pass the record ID of the user that is clicking the button. And there's our two key pieces of information that we need to link together. I hope you can follow and replicate this. But as I mentioned earlier, if you're struggling with any of the formulas or any of the sort of code snippets in that, I do have an embedded copy of the Airtable base used in this tutorial inside of my community, which you can find in the link in the description of this video below. So please do go on over there and you can make a copy of that Airtable base into your own Airtable workspace. And you can, in your own time, go into all of the different formula field settings and see exactly what way it's set up. And hopefully married with this video in terms of going through the software studio side of the build, you'll be able to create some really incredible functionality. I'd really love to hear about what you're building. And so please do leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you do have any questions on today's video, again, please ask questions below and I'll be happy to get back to you as soon as I can. So we've only really just scraped the surface of what action buttons can do. If you can crack everything that I've shown in the video here today, can you imagine now what you can do when you combine that action button with Integromat or with Zapier? The action is not confined to just simply linking two pieces of information together. The action can now be really only limited by flows that you can do inside of an Integromat or a Zapier type flow. And that's what I've been doing really in a lot of my tutorials. You might have seen some of my earlier tutorials like how to build an e-commerce store, how to build a marketplace, how to build a client portal, how to build a membership site. What I've discovered is a lot of the breakthroughs in those builds are actually relying on this key piece of functionality being a sort of workaround to create an action button until we see a native action button inside of software, which I feel can't be too far off. But in the meantime, this will let you make advances and take your app to the next level. And so if you got any value from today's video, I'd really love if you'd hit the like button on the video and consider subscribing to the channel. It really motivates me to keep producing content like this. I'm having a great time. I'm really meeting quite a lot of people through doing this. And if you enjoyed the concept in the video today and you'd like to maybe take it even to a more 
more advanced level. I really think you'll get a lot of value from this video here. It shows you how to use not only an action button to trigger a webhook action into Integromat, but it also shows you how to use a webhook response inside of Integromat. So we can send information back to your user having clicked that action button and tell your software app what to do next with your user. So redirect them to another page or do something else. Thanks again for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks guys. Talk to you soon.